All right, guys, before you start this video, please make sure that you know the rules of transformation. So that's covered in a different video. So again, you're just asking yourself, is it um, inside or is it outside? So is it inside or outside? If it's inside, it's X and opposite. That means inside the function. If it's outside, it's Y and regular. Okay. Um, negative is opposite no matter where you are. Once you ask yourself whether it's inside or opposite or whether you have a negative, your second question is, remember, positives and negatives are shifts on the X or Y axis. Um, multiplication is a stretch or shrink in the X or Y direction. But also remember, with multiplication, you have um, fractions between... So fractions between zero and one, just between bigger than zero and less than or equal to one, actually just less than, all right? So between zero and one, fractions uh, shrinks and stretches uh, numbers bigger than one, all right? Any number bigger than one is going to make it stretch. Anything between zero and one as a fraction is going to make it shrink. All right, negatives are flips over the x and the y axis, res respectively. Okay, so once you have a really good grasp on that, um, you can come to these questions, and we're just going to apply these rules. But I'm also going to show you how to kind of do it um, the long way if you do not know the rules on a couple of those examples. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the first example. It says, what kind of transformation converts the graph, this graph, into this graph? So look at the difference. So what does the parent graph look like? So look at this. What is it? Linear, right? So we know that this is the graph that looks like y equals x. That's the original graph, right? Examine f of x and g of x closely. What are the differences? So looking very closely at this and this, the only difference I see is right here, g of x does not have a negative, okay? So you have to ask yourself then, what does the transformation rule that's going to change this from a negative to a positive, all right? And sometimes you have to look at your options because there are several transformations that would work, Um and again, you have to know your rules before you can even do this question. So I'm just going to go off based off you know your rules. So for me to change this um, negative to a positive, okay, it's going to have to be a reflection because I know I'm going to have a negative. Um, I need to have a negative attached to the X in order for just the X one to change. So there's um, a negative attached to the X, which means I'm thinking, so a negative with X means that it's inside, right? So if it's inside and you have a negative, what does that mean? Because inside, remember, is X and opposite of whatever you think. And negatives are flips. So that means it's going to be a flip over the opposite. Instead of it being X, it's going to be a flip over the Y. So it's going to be reflect over the Y. And again, if you are finding it hard to follow along what I'm doing, you must know the transformation rules before you can do this video. All right. So again, think of what has changed from here to here. Then ask yourself, what is that rule? So the rule is is um, this is going to have to be multiplied by a negative, right? And it's just with the X because you can see this is still negative, which means it's a negative with X. And what is that rule? Negative um, are opposite no matter where they are. It is inside because it's only attached to the X. And of course, negatives are flips. So I know that this is a negative inside, which would be a flip over the opposite of X, which is Y. Okay. And again, I'm going to go over a few examples to make sure that you really get a good grasp of this. Example two. All right. What kind of transformation converts this one to this one? F of X to G of X. So let's take a look again at what is a parent graph look like. So remember, this is a um, quadratic, right? So you should have a quadratic look something like this, something squared, right? So this is the thing that's inside. Everything else is outside, right? So now that you know that, examine f of x and g of x closely. Let's look at them. What is the difference? All right, so let's see if we can spot the difference. It looks like just this number went from 8 to 2. So if there's only three options for that to happen, right, um, you can add and subtract, or um, it could be, and you can't be adding or subtracting because that would have been like, um, let me pick a pencil. Don't write this down. That would have been like in here like this. And that's not, that's not what you're doing, right? So it can't be adding and subtracting. So it's going to be multiplication. So you're multiplying it for something. So what are you multiplying 8 by to get 2, right? That's the question. What are you multiplying 8 by to get 2? So it's a multiplication. So I already know my rule is going to be a multiplication. So it's either a stretch or a shrink depending on what it is. And in order to get it smaller, it's going to be a fraction multiplication. So that's what I need to remember. So this is a fraction so this is a fraction 
multiplication. Okay, and I need to know if it's inside or if it's outside because that's going to determine um, if I'm stretching or shrinking. Because right now as a fraction, if it is outside, it's a shrink, right? But remember, if it's inside, it's opposite. So um, did I apply it to all my numbers? That's the question. So did I apply my shrink or my fraction multiplication to the every number? No, I didn't. So I only applied it to what? The X. So this is an X fraction multiplication. So think about that. X is where? Inside and opposite of whatever you think. So remember, a fraction is going to be a multiplication. A stretch is greater than one. And a shrink is usually a fraction is between zero and one. So you'd think your fraction would be a shrink. But because it is x, it's what? Opposite of what you think. So it's really a stretch. In which direction? In x direction. So this is a horizontal stretch. So again, if you are not following what I am doing, definitely go back and learn the rules so that you can understand what we're working on here. All right, let's take a look at another example. What kind of transformation converts this to this? So again, what does a parent graph look like? This is linear, so this is supposed to be y equals x. All right, um, examine them closely, see what the difference is. So let's see what happened. It went from, it looks like it goes from 8 to 4, right? So it got smaller by multiplication. And also it went from 10 to 5. Right, so what did I do? It, it's a fraction multiplication. So fraction multiplication. All right, now I need to know, is it in the X or in the Y? Because it's not just with the X, right? It's not just with my function. It's with both, both of them. It means that this one must be um, with the Y, it must be outside, okay? So it's a Y fraction. So what does a Y fraction multiplication do? So again, knowing your rules, um, outside is Y and regular, so whatever you think is what it is, all right? And you have a multiplication, and you have a multiplication fraction. So a multiplication fraction is a shrink. And because it's Y and regular, it's what you think, so it's a shrink in the Y direction. So looking at this, it is a vertical shrink. All right, example four, what kind of transformation converts this graph to this? When it's not obvious, okay, so sometimes you'll get some questions where you can't just see it immediately. Use your answers to perform the transformations to see if you get what you need, okay? So again, if it's not obvious, just use your answer key, okay, what you have here. So I'm just going to look at it real quick because apparently this is not obvious. Um, I would think, so the only difference, the only difference I'm spotting is that the six, um, the six is the only difference. So here there's a six and here there isn't. So I would have thought that it would be, again, I would do multiply by a fraction, right? To get from here to here. But I would think that it's outside because it's outside my function. But when I look at my answer choices, look, the only thing I have that are stretches and shrink are horizontal. So again, I'm going to use my answers um, to go ahead and do this unless it's a typo in a question. So what I'm going to do is this. I know it's definitely not reflection because what do you need to have in order for you to have reflections? Negatives. So the only difference, the only change has got to be no changes in signs. So it's definitely not A and it's definitely not C. So it's either a horizontal stretch and a horizontal shrink. So remember that it's X and opposite when it's horizontal, right? So opposite. So a stretch is going to be the one with a fraction. And a shrink is the one we're going to be with the ones with um, values that are bigger than one, right? So now you're asking yourself, for me to get from here to this six to an invisible one, all right? Am I multiplying by a number bigger than one? So in other words, six times two is what? Twelve. So that number is going to get bigger if I do greater than one. I'm really multiplying by a fraction, which must mean that this is a horizontal stretch. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying it by one-sixth. One-sixth times six is going to give me one. So I'm not sure if this was a typo in the question, but I, how I would have written this question would have been like that, right? So, so that I know that it's inside, right? So I change from there to there. The only thing that has changed is that this six has gone to one, which is a horizontal stretch, okay? Now, the difference...